Thunderdrome is a racing game for two to six players, but it's best around four, where you'll be competing to see who's the first to complete five laps of the track. Thunder Thunderdrome is simple to learn, but has some surprising strategic depth. Uh, you have to plan out the rhythm of your lap on a very cramped track, where people will be bumping into each other all the time. You have to manage how much damage you take, get the fans on your side, and make sure to stop at the pits at the right time, because your deck of cards won't last you the whole race. Let's get into it. When you open the game, you should have set player pawns, some red damage cubes made with real damage, some blue fan boost cubes made with real fans, and some white lap counter cubes. You'll also have a lot of cards, which you'll need to separate into a deck of track cards and seven decks of player cards. Each player deck should have 12 numbered cards and one status card. To set up the track, take the start, finish, and pit lane cards out of the track deck. Shuffle the remaining track cards and lay out six of them with the track steps aligned like this. Uh, track cards can have one or two lanes, and they have one, two, or three spaces on them per lane. I like to make sure that the first card is a big open straightway like this, but after a couple of games you'll get a feel for what you like. You can also adjust the length of the track, with longer tracks being harder. Keep the red and blue cubes where everyone can reach them. Each player then selects a player deck. There's no difference between the decks, you just pick your favourite horse. Remove the status card, put it in front of you, and place the lap counter on the one space. Each player also takes the matching player pawn and places it on the grid. The order doesn't matter a huge deal, so shuffling them up randomly will do. Uh, each player shuffles their personal deck and draws six cards. Finally, decide which player is going first and give them the first player marker. The original rules set for the first player was the last one to fly on a plane, but this game was literally published in January 2020, so that rule got weird fast, so I don't know. Player who travels furthest to get there. It's fine. It's important that you remember who goes first, but it's not important how you decide it, so just give it to someone. <laughs> uh, your turn is real simple. You play a card from your hand, move your pawn that many spaces, and then draw a card from your deck to replace it. Every time you pass the start-finish line after the start, you move your lap counter along a space. That's literally it! Um, there's just a few things to keep in mind. Track cards, with these numbers on them, and this warning strip, are corners. You need to slow down going through them. You either end your movement on the corner, or, if you're blasting past it, make sure you move no faster than this number on the corner. If you're going too fast and skipping past the corner, you take a damage cube. Remember that you only need to meet one of these conditions to avoid the damage. You stop on it, or you slow down. Now about that damage... You put your damage cube on one of the three spaces on your status card, and you choose where it goes. You can damage your visor, which reduces your hand limit by one card, your arrow, which makes you treat all corners as one slower, or your thrusters, which means you have to move one space slower. Don't ask me why the horses have thrusters, it's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. When you take multiple points of damage, you have to spread it around, until you've got one in each space. Then the next damage can go wherever, until you have two in each space, three, etc. To remove damage, you need to visit the pits, which you'll need to do anyway. From this space on the grid, you can choose to move instead to the pit lane. When you stop on one of the spaces in the pits, any of these spaces, you take all of your discarded cards and shuffle them back into your deck. You can refill your hand back up to your limit if you need to, but otherwise leave your hand alone. You also remove any one damage cube. If you want to remove more than one cube of damage, you'll need to spend multiple turns in the pits, either by waiting or by playing a card that doesn't move you past the pit exit. You enter from and exit to these spaces on the grid card, but you can move into either lane. This is known as the Philadelphia lane change, and while it may be rude, it is legal. Also, if you find yourself in a six-player game and every space in the pits is occupied, you are out of luck. That poor six-player cannot stop this lap. If you run out of cards before you make it to the pits, you're not out, but you do go back to the last empty space in the pits, and you lose a lap when you do so. Not so bad if you've just crossed the line, terrible if you've just run out with a few spaces to go. So one question you've probably asked at this point is, what happens if someone's in the space that I want to land on? Well, if there's another lane, you go beside them, but if there isn't, you get bumped back a space, but you earn a cube of fan boost for your trouble. You can also earn fan boost when you go through a stadium corner, which is these corners with this symbol, uh, at exactly the speed listed. Fan boost can be spent for extra speed. When you play a card with the fan boost symbol on it, you can spend any of your fan boost to go one extra space per cube. You can spend as much as you like doing this. If you've got 10 cubes, you can go to 10 spaces for the red line ending if you really want to. <laughs> one thing I should mention is that when you're taking damage from corners, you always use your actual distance traveled. So you can use traffic to slow yourself down, or if you're dumping a ton of fan boost to blast all the way down the track, you're probably taking damage from every single corner you pass. 
finally, in the unlikely event of a tie at the end of the game, Fanboost breaks ties. People have told me that this is impossible because people generally spend Fanboost at the end of the game anyway, but it is technically possible if you have Fanboost but you don't have a Fanboost card on the last turn, and anyway. When any player on lap 5 crosses the finish line, the game doesn't end immediately, it just triggers the last round. This is what the first player marker is for. Play continues until you reach the last player, so everyone's had the same number of turns. And that's it! That's Thunderdrum. But while I'm here, I might as well teach the expansions. Uh, each expansion has two new player decks and a few track pieces, each of which comes with a new feature, and the new decks are bicolor, meaning they can use either pawn of the two colors that are on the card. So if, say, someone wants to use Scootaloo, but Spitfire's already in the game, Scootaloo can be purple. Easy. Uh, to add the track pieces, you just add them to the track deck at the start of the game. Uh, also, all the expansion boxes fit inside the box for the base game, but it's a bit of a squeeze because it wasn't quite planned, but hey, it's close enough. The Youngblood expansion adds stunt jumps to the game. These are an extra way to get fan boost. Uh, they work like inverse corners. If you're traveling at or above the speed listed on the card and you clear it, you get a fan boost for your sick moves. Can this result in a track configuration where you have a jump you literally cannot use without taking damage? Yes! Up to you if you want to take that risk. Sometimes it's worth it. Uh, Future Shock adds boost pads. When you end your turn on a boost pad, you get a free space of movement at the start of your next turn. It's just that easy! Uh, this can also create traps where you get boosted into a wall around a hairpin. The Omega Wing expansion gives you tournament rules. Technically this isn't a feature of the track cards, you can just have tournaments without it. Uh, but there's track pieces in here anyway that you can use without any special rules. Uh, tournaments are typically four races with points awarded based on finishing position and bonus points for finishing with the most fan boost and the least damage. Finally, uh, Fury Road adds weapons platforms. When you end your turn on one, you can spend fan boost to damage one player that's ahead of you on track. If you do this from last place, you can spend two fan boosts to get everyone a point of damage. If you're asking me which expansions I'd recommend, I think Youngblood and Future Shock add more strategic depth with the least rules, so if you want something that's fair and competitive, get those. Uh, Fury Road makes it a bit more of a chaotic party game, and you get Omega Wing if you like Fleetfoot, basically. Uh, because at the end of the day, the horses are half of the appeal, and the character decks that come in the expansions can be used without the track cards. Now that's all of Thunderdrome. You can try the game for free on Tabletop Simulator, which includes all of the expansions and some special pre-built tracks and some digital lonely decks. And you can buy the game and its expansions at the Game Crafter with the links in the description. Uh, thanks for watching, go fast, be a horse.